This story begins thousands of years before Europeans came to this continent. A song line joins Yungon country in northeast Arnhem Land to Makassar in Sulawesi, Indonesia. For thousands of years before colonization, Australia already interacted with the world outside economically, linguistically, ecologically, culturally, and spiritually. The root of this history lies in Taripa, or sea cucumber, which drew Makassan visitors to northern Australia to harvest for sale on the international market. The Makassans arrived each year with the monsoon and stayed for months, working alongside Yungu in their shared industry. But this history encompasses much more than trade. It represents the arrival of Islam on this continent long before Christianity and a history of mutual exchange and agency. It also poses a powerful counterpoint to the colonial pearl and pearl shell trade, notorious for its enslavement of indigenous people across northern Australia. It was my honour to interview Timmy Bararwanga of Yurikala in Yungo country to learn about this history. Where I come from, Boka, it's name come from Makassan. What does Bawaka mean in Makassan? Unknown heaven. It's a so long story. Now it's like our song lines right across from the Arnhem Land to the Indonesia to Makassar. What connection does your family have to the Makassans? My grand- grandmothers and grandfathers tell me stories about Makassan. We have very strong connections. And it's written written by thousands of years, like it's it's been used song in the song lines and in the arts and also in the um in the language. What are some of the Makassan words in Yungumata? There's lots of words, there's thousands of words of Makassan's languages. Right across in Arnhem Land. We we have adopted our languages between Makassar and Yungo people in thousands of years. Like Rupia. Rupia is the money. What are some of the physical things the Makassans left behind in the landscape? Did they bring plants or animals? They left what we call jambang. Jambang is a tamarind tree. And in the coastlines in Arnhem Land, the tamarind trees are some sort of a special plant that planted by the Makassans right across. And it is saying that Makassan people were here in the thousands of years. And that's like unique to every young people, or young people right across. You know, they they came through uh, Western Australia and Cape York, and they went all over the places. Do you still collect Taripa now? We don't collect Trupe now, but um, tribes now painting Trupe We also respect the, the animal. You know, it's, it's a sea cucumber and um, we call it taripa. We respect it and we also, a um, lot of people that put it in the art and paint it and the stories be told by the elders. Did the Makassans harvest other things as well? They were, they were collecting a lot of, a um, lot of things like pearls and um, shells because they see you know, people were collecting it. And because of Macassan saw that, and then they started collecting. So there was a like knowledge between Macassan people and Yungo people. Are there songs in Yungo Mata about the Macassans and Taripa? After that, of this collecting, they used to sit around and you know sing a songs while they're cooking, sing a songs about when they harvesting. And today, we always sing that songs, especially the land the sea, the creatures inside the, the sea. So it's a, it's a very unique and uh, very important for, for young people. How did the Makassans practice religion when they came? Did they share their religion with Yungu? There were, there were some of the religions um, to adopt it by the Makassans, because Makassans were the uh, Muslims. They were, they were something that was share in those times and uh, because of those times you know people didn't know understanding about what the religion was you know but there was a like ceremonies and a law and song lines and dance and you know and then there was a there was a show that was adopted by Macassans. it was a, a exchange knowledge 
you know, they gave us knives or ikki, you know, steels, that young people right across were using that steels. Very sacred and very value to the tribes, dancing with the flags and, and knives, all those things that happening today is comes from the Makassans. Did many Yungu travel back to Makassar or marry Makassan people? Yeah, it was, yes. My, um, there was a lot of people went back to Makassar and stayed there. And um, there was a one man who took his spears and circle net um, and a plant there. And, and also this man had a, a wife. And also my grand-grand-grandmother, she went and stayed there for many of years and had a kids and a, and a family. There was exchange marriages in those times, not only in this region, but there's a lot, lot of other, other places. It was sort of, you know, culture, and in this culture was the um, relationship between Yulungur and Makassin was really strong. It's like a family, you know, people were living, sharing food, working together. It was that economy, bringing that new economy, and also the family structures we always talk about that every day, like when we're sitting around campfires. We always talk about Makassans. We always talk about the history of the family. So for for us, it's it's really powerful. So we need to we need to adopt this education and you know um, to give this to non-Aboriginal people or in the curriculum that talks about the history about you know first connections with Makassans. You know, and we need to we need to educate that. You know, because that story is deep knowledge and it's... We want to celebrate, just like people that in this country celebrate, you know, um, January the 25th. We want to celebrate something that is what's special to Aboriginal people and to the um, the first people that connected to Aboriginal people. And I think that's a very unique and appropriate way of doing it. This is what I always think about it. All the people that is believe that they were here and there was, you know, peace. This project was made on the unceded lands of the Yungo people and of the Lache Lache and Nyeri Nyeri people. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Sovereignty was never ceded. I'd like to thank the Molka Project in Yirrkala for all their help in making this possible, as well as Dr. Bree Blakeman and EFest for inviting me to make a work for their event. Happy anniversary. <laughs>